Well, our distinguished, uh, most senior pastor, the older of the senior pastors, <laughs> and more distinguished. You want a you want a pulpit? Oh, you want a microphone? Yeah. Thank you. How y'all doing? All right, so it's going to be a little bit different tonight, but uh, I've given you a handout here that we're probably not going to refer to, but it's very, it's, it's very, uh, uh, it's very self-explanatory, but it takes a little digging. We're not going to dig back into Daniel, but Daniel and Revelation are tied together uh, and it comes to end time events, uh, the end of the world. And uh, you'll see that much of what's in the New Testament uh, is in Daniel and several other, other, other prophet books that are that we have uh, in the Old Testament help you understand Daniel, and uh, it's it's a key thing, but it's a, a deeper thing. So I, what I'm doing because there's a lot of young young people and other uh, people uh, in our in our congregation that have uh, zero idea when we say the end of the world, we say Jesus is going to come back. That's about all they know. They don't know the order of anything. So we're going to lay this out simple. And, uh, and so that's, that's what I'm hoping, you know, uh, that, that I'm, I'm able to do tonight so that there's a clear understanding, no matter what age you are, you be able to, uh, to, to grab a hold of this. So the first thing I want to do is begin by, by just simply saying that, uh, that I titled this, uh, end of the world timeline, not meaning that I'm going to tell you when Jesus is going to come or when the end of the world's going to happen, but when the end of the world happens, what are the events to occur uh, at the beginning of the end, so to speak. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to know and understand is that um, uh, the book of Revelation tells us we win and there's victory and we sing about home in heaven. We win and there is, there, this world is not our home. And one of the things that obviously we're seeing, there's a lot of things around the world where people that aren't even churched are going, what's wrong? Quote, unquote, a lot of people think to themselves, is this the end of the world as we know it? Uh, is there going to be some sort of uh, uh, catastrophe uh, as far as some uh, event happening that that will basically wipe out half the the population of the world, or you know, as far as the weather event? Uh, I mean, you have to admit that you see it all over the news that from fires to floods to tornadoes to to uh, hurricanes to uh, you name it, it's unprecedented as well as uh, people being going mad. We live in an unprecedented time that would catch a person's attention uh, about the end of the world. And so I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to begin with to lay a groundwork, uh, simply to lay this also for uh, anything online. For people watching online, we welcome you. Uh, but also for any of you that may not know uh, where we're coming from is reference to the coming of the Lord. Somehow, someone's spreading the fact that this whole idea of the rapture of the church is a, a new ideal in Christianity that came around in the 1800s or something like that. That's B-L-O-L-O-G-N-A-E, or however you spell it. That's baloney. Apostle Paul, he had it right when he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read it at funerals, Brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. In other words, who have died in Christ is what he's saying. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive, meaning on earth, okay, we're not dead, we're alive, and are left will be caught up together. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but it's referring to the catching up of the saints right here, being caught up. It's a derivative, I don't even know where that all began, but it doesn't matter. Trinity is not in the Bible either. But we believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we use the word Trinity to describe what we believe in theology, and it's in everywhere. And so right here, they will be caught up together, meaning the dead that have died in Christ Jesus and the living that are alive at the time of this shout 
this trumpet sound. They were caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we ever be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Why encourage each other with these words? Because this world's not our home. Because we're going to see uh, the beginnings of trouble all around the world and sorrow and difficulty and stress as we are today. In every generation, there are reasons why you don't want to make heaven I mean, make earth your eternal resting place. You don't want earth to be where you live forever and ever and ever and ever because it's just not that good. And if it's good when you're 18 or 17, it won't be good when you're 80 and 85 and 90 because every joint in your body will be hurting by then. And in some cases, like when I'm 64, that'll be the case. How I many you know what I'm saying? So you're, our, our, we better have something better than the temporary blink of an eye existence on this earth and we do home heaven is our home this world we're passing through we're tent dwellers only and so this thing is real apostle paul talks about it over and over it's called the blessed hope it's in the book folks and you know why people are trying to say this whole thing has been made up come about because they also have a, a, a end to it and that is there is no hell let me tell you something there is a literal hell the Bible talks about it. It's filled with it. There is a literal hell. And churches and people that are trying to teach today, there is no hell. They are absolutely wrong, and their agenda is dishonest and not forthright. And let me tell you, if you don't speak on hell in a church, then you're making a mistake too. I could never speak, it's not speak, speak on that. Well, what would it be like for me never to speak to my kids when I lived on the corner of 76 and Meredith to stay out of the middle of Meredith? It wouldn't be very nice. I could pretend that cars didn't run up down there 40 and 50 miles an hour on a busy four lane city road uh, uh, there on Meredith and not ever talk about it. But there's danger there. And let me tell you, when you love someone, you warn them of danger. And and Jesus himself warned of this danger that there is a literal place called hell where people he said would be gnashing their teeth they'd be cursing God the ones that go there so let me tell you something you go to a church it doesn't ever bring up hell you're in the wrong church didn't like that did you all right and then he says in 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection chapter, starting in verse 50, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. We'll all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised, imperishable, and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then that saying is written, will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, when you see therefore, see what it's there for. Because I just told you all this about heaven and all of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Paul says, therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Listen, here's the message when trouble comes in end times. Don't waver. Stand firm. Hold on to the faith. Okay? Stand firm. Always give yourself, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Why? Because heaven is real. Because Jesus is coming back. Because there's a trumpet that's going to sound. Now turn with me to Revelation chapter number 1, verse 19. Now we might have a scripture on the board up there, Jacob. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. There's the outline of the Revelation. The things you've seen, that's chapter 1. Well, what do you talk about in Reve it's the revelation of Jesus Christ according to verse 1? Revelation of Jesus Christ. And in that, you'll see who Jesus is. You'll see he's a great God. He's the, verse 8, he's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And, 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 and you, you see it again saying, verse 11, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. 
what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches that are in Asia. And he gives those. And that's chapter two and three, okay? And uh, the, the, the letters to the churches that he writes. And, uh, and, and then he gets over to verse, uh, when he, uh, in verse number 19, well, go, going back to verse 12. I'm gonna read verse 12 in Revelation one. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden stands, lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as wool, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, out of his, and out of his mouth came a sharp, a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all of its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I was dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and of hell. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. And I'm going to go to King James on that. Write the things which you've seen, and the things which are, and the things which you shall be, see hereafter. So what are we saying? In chapter 1, he reveals himself, Jesus does, and he says, I'm not the Lamb of God coming. I'm not the Savior coming anymore. I'm going to come as judge. I'm going to come as a mighty God. He paints himself. And let me give you, in Revelation, to understand this book, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. You have to understand there's a lot of symbolism, but the symbolism has literal truth as you interpret the symbolism from the Bible itself, not some fairy tale thing or something out of your imagination. The Bible itself, the Word of God, Revelation, can be interpreted from the Word of God. Twice I preached verse by verse through the book of Revelation. And I will tell you, just like uh, uh, when it talks about uh, over in Revelation 12 or whatever chapter is, uh, Gary, you can help me with that in a minute, but where it talk, starts talking about the devil and describes him and describes him like a big dragon with a big tail and all that. You know, there's a perfect example. Satan's not a dragon, but a lot of the features of a dragon and the power that, and, and some of the things that, that it brings up there are literal truths about Satan and who he is. The same way here, when he sees Jesus, it's not how he literally looks. When you get to heaven, you're not gonna see him that way. He had a vision of Jesus to say, this is who this Jesus is. He's the almighty one. He's always been, he always will be. He's forever and ever and he has all power. And, and so we see this very clearly. So then when we get to the first thing you see in verse 19 of Revelation 1 is write the things you've seen. So he wrote thus, at ver he began to write in chapter 2 what he saw in chapter 1. He wrote down rather chapter 1 what he had seen up to that point. So chapter 1 of Revelation is what he, what he says. It says write the things which you've seen. So he saw that stuff. He wrote it. That's chapter 1. Okay, chapter 1. Verse 19 it says, write the things which you've seen. And he wrote it in Revelation 1. And then it says, and the things that are, which are. That's the church age. The things are was what was happening then. We are in a dispensation of grace. They were in dispensation of grace when Revelation was written. And chapters 2 and 3 are the things that are. And that's, we are still in the things that are, are right here. We're in it. We're in a dispensation of grace. In other words, continuing the continuation of the church of Jesus Christ and the letters written to each of the seven churches are letters that can be written to many churches and to people here. And among us, we're individual members of the church. Each letter might speak to us differently. But in every letter, he ends with this to every church. He that overcomes, he that overcomes has eternal life. He that overcomes. Just know that he, he that hath the ear, verse 11 of chapter 2, let him hear what the spirit of the church has said. He that overcometh shall not hurt of the second death. Uh, or as it says in the, in the NIV, he who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. We do not want to be a part of that second death. Let me tell you that. Death in the Bible is eternal separation from God, and we don't want to be a part of it. And he writes to the churches, and that's the age of which we are in. And those letters in chapter 2 and 3 are pertinent to what? Examine our hearts from the correction that was given of Jesus Christ, the revealing Christ, to us in the church age where we are. And then it says, back to Revelation 1.19 again, then it says, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now I want you to watch this. Chapter 4, verse 1. 119, the third thing it says, the things which shall be hereafter. 
All right, chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show the things which must be hereafter. The exact same wording as the last part of verse chapter 119. I will show you the things which shall be hereafter. Can you go to the next screen? Is that on verse 2? I will show you the things. Uh, it's, it's actually part of verse 1. It looks like it's not all showing up on, on there. But uh, anyway, if you have your Bible, it says, so I'll show you the things which shall be. I will show you the things which must be, rather, hereafter. Go back to 119. What does it say? And it says this. And the things which shall be hereafter. It's the exact wording. So here's what I believe. Here's the timeline of the end of the world. The beginning of the very end is there's going to be a trumpet going to sound. There's going to be a shout from God. And the dead in Christ are going to rise. And we which are alive and remain that are a part of the Christ will be gone. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You see Paul writes it to the church at Corinth. He writes it uh, to the um, Thessalonians, the Thessalonica church. He mentions this. It's mentioned throughout Scripture. Uh, we, we'll, you can see it other places, but I'm not doing a, a Bible study where we're going to go into that. But the point being that from chapter 4, verse 1, notice he is called up. He said, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. Where is he? He's in heaven. The first verse I heard was a trumpet talking to me. There was a trumpet sounded. This is picturesque of the trumpet of being in heaven. Okay? That's the rapture. Chapter 4, verse 1. I believe the rapture happens. That begins the seven-year period called tribulation. And it's the great tribulation. And it's the wrath of God. And so... Uh, we pick up we pick up there and f af after that some people believe that it happens in the middle I can see some of the scriptures I just disagree with it I've studied it out myself I didn't do it because it's the quote unquote Southern Baptist view or the quote unquote Assembly of God view it's because I wasn't sure I studied this thing to the nth degree myself and I am absolutely convinced in my mind that Jesus Christ comes back the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise and we are caught up to meet the Lord in the air and it's before the seven years of great tribulation happens. But people say, but we're going to face a lot of trouble. Yes, we are. Because Jesus says it in Matthew chapter 24. He says there'll be uh, the beginnings of, of sorrow, the beginnings of trouble. You begin to see it. And I think that, well, I don't understand all of that. But I will tell you one thing. And I think Pastor Jeff mentioned it. There doesn't have to be chaos all over the world when Christ comes back. In fact, it could be life as usual, nothing really un. un that spectacular happening then. And people are like, like they said, the day and no, they're eating and they're, they're rejoicing and they're marrying and burying and life is as usual and boom, suddenly the flood comes and Jesus comes. So we don't know when he's going to come. We just know he's going to come. And uh, it doesn't mean that Christians is some sort of escape clause or some sort of a clause going, you're never going to face any suffering. I mean, goodness gracious, we see that. Look at the disciples of Jesus. They were 11 of a martyr. They, you tell, you're not going to have no, uh, this world. Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer of overcome the world. That's not the point of believing this. The point of believing this is that there is an eternity that's for real, forever. And that God's going to come and, 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 and take us home. There is a home. And we can rejoice and we can be encouraged in that. And it encourages us to have that hope to live as if God is going to come. And there's going to be these end time events. So what happens? Uh, dead in Christ rise. The church disappears and we go to heaven. And for seven years there's a rewards banquet. Okay? It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And only believers are there. And when the dead rise up, the bodies rise up, it's not just the bodies that rise up from when Jesus came to earth, died and rose again, but it's all the way back to Adam. All who died in faith, Jesus Christ is their Savior. They died in faith believing the promises of God, and Jesus Christ is their Savior as well. And all the saints of old and new, all of us will be together with the Lord forever, and we're going to have a great rewards banquet. There won't be anybody being judged and sent to hell at that time. There'll be a, uh, we're going to eat the marriage supper of the Lamb. Is there food in heaven? Absolutely, better than on earth. I tell you one thing, if chili cook off, you're going to, you hadn't tasted ch chili till you've tasted it in heaven. Although some of you might have thought you were in heaven eating that. I heard it was pretty good. <laughs> I heard it was pretty good. And, uh, and so 
Then on earth, there's seven years of tribulation, and you'll see that mentioned. Matthew 24 mentions the uh, 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 abomination of desolation, the, when, when the desecration, and when uh, Satan enters the, the, the temple and he says, I'm God, and demands everybody to bow down. It's, it's right in the middle of the seven-year period. It's three and a half years into it, okay? Now, I'm going to ask Gary to come up. And uh, we're going to take some questions and answers. Uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, the, the, while this seven-year period is going on, we're in heaven on earth. Um, uh, their tribulation is beginning, and it, it begins to describe that starting in. Uh, and Gary just grabbed Pastor Brett's mic off of his stand there. Uh, it begins to describe it in Revelation uh, chapter number 6. If you look at, again, I, and I kind of cut off there, Revelation 4, you see a scene in heaven after the church age. So right after the trumpet, then it begins to describe heaven and who all's in heaven. And they, they couldn't find anybody worthy to open the book of life. Uh, th there was nobody worthy, but then suddenly a lamb was standing in the midst of them in Revelation 4. That's Jesus, the lamb of God. He's not setting, he's standing, meaning victorious, meaning he's risen. Revelation 4. And in, in 5, and they're in heaven and they're praising God and, and giving all the glory belongs to God, Revelation 4, 5. And then in chapter 6, all of a sudden, uh, you begin to see the description uh, that, um, no, it was actually chapter 5 where, the, where there was no one to open the scroll. So why do I bring up the scroll, the, the, the book of life? Why? Because it basically says the list of those that should be in heaven, Jesus is the one that provided it. He's the one worthy to open it to give everybody the gift of eternal life. And so if you think that chapter 4 is not the rapture, you're wrong. Just point blank. I, I still respect, I respect you as a person, but I won't agree with you because I'm convinced that it begins there. And then, and I'm going to let you share this up on top here. So, and then in, in chapter number six, uh, and we're doing this to have a quite, field some questions in a minute here. In Revelation chapter six, you see the judgment of the seals that comes. In chapter seven, you see the, the 144,000 Jews that are sealed so that nothing can hurt them. Many people will not take the mark of the beast. Many people will come to Christ. It'll be mostly Jewish people who realize Jesus is their Messiah, but there'll be others as well. Uh, and, um, and, and you see the seventh seal in chapter 8 being opened up. Uh, and then uh, and then, uh, then the, the fifth angel sounds his trumpet, and he saw a star that had fallen in verse nine, chapter 9. Of Revelation, sky of the earth, the star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened, the smoke from the ab ab abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down from the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth, etc. etc. And so there's all of these uh, 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 judgments of God. And uh, then, you know, we're talking about the judgments that begin with the judgment seals and then the, the, the trumpet judgments of God. And, uh, and, and then we see the most horrible thing that ever could take place is this, uh, it doesn't call it that in Revelation. Jesus calls it in Matthew 24, the abomination of desolation where uh, suddenly Satan himself steps up and demands everybody take the mark of the beast, uh, honor him as as god uh, we're all still in heaven it's on earth uh the those that were ready or caught up and the earth is experiencing this whole thing and uh the 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 uh, seven years ends finally and uh, uh i mean there are people that don't take the mark of the beast you can read about that that some that they that they're they're given a martyr's reward because but it, you know and i'll and i'll tell you about next sunday night i'm gonna talk about this about uh, uh, plan B, plan B, plan A is be ready for the rapture. What is plan B? If you miss the rapture, I'm going to tell you about plan B. Okay. And, um, uh, you, you don't want to miss this one because some of you think something that's wrong. It, it, you're not right about it, uh, about this plan B. Uh, and so, but going back, you know, at the end of this time, uh, uh, Satan, who presents himself in trying nature the same as God does, we have the beast, we have the, uh, the antichrist, and we have the, uh, the false prophet. The false prophet kind of mimics the Holy Spirit 
that the beast is uh, the, the, the son of God. He mimics that because he wants to be worshipped. And then uh, the, the Antichrist, rather, wants to be worshipped. It's rather than the beast being almighty God. So you got a triune nature of the very part of Satan who's presenting himself. Because that's, he wanted to be God in the beginning. This has been the whole problem. And, of course, he gets, ends up being cast into uh, the bottomless pit at, at the very end of the whole thing. So the timeline then, we're in heaven seven years, rewards banquet, supper of the lamb. We're not eating straight seven years. I don't understand at all. I just know we're in heaven. On earth, the great tribulation, which is from God, judging the earth and the world with these, these things that come upon them, all described in Revelation. And then uh, that ends... With Jesus coming back, and Revelation describes it, he's riding on a big white horse, and he comes in with all the saints behind him. The Bible describes him having this sword coming out of his mouth, two-edged sword, and, and brightness destroying the enemy, okay? And it's the Battle of Armageddon. I've been there. Uh, there's three different names. Gary, what are they? The, the valley, there's three valleys names yeah, the, in the Old Testament. Am I on? Yeah, just talk, talk uh, about it. Valley of Jezreel and another called the... Esdraelon Valley. You see all three of those names in the scripture. In the Valley of Megiddo. And Megiddo. Valley yeah, so Megiddo. all three of them, but it's the same thing. We've been there, and it's a huge area, valley, that, that this is where it's going to be fought. This may not be fought all over the world. This is mainly fought in Israel, right. the Middle East, but nations with which when this was written, you, you, you know, they didn't know anything about superpowers or airplanes and all that. But, you know, they described things in pictures that looked like what we might call Star Wars today. And so nations will all be there, and it's going to be a bloodbath, okay? But not everybody's going to die in it, all right? Because when it's over, and Jesus destroys those against Israel, his chosen, and he comes back and he destroys. The Bible says we will rule and reign with him a thousand years. That's the millennial reign. So seven years of tribulation, the second coming of Christ, not the rapture of the church, the second coming of Christ when he comes down on his white horse described in Revelation um, 19. 19. And <laughs> thank you, that's why I got him up here. And so, and he comes in and, uh, and then... We, we set up and Jesus reigns and rules and we, we reign with him a thousand years. Well, who are we ruling? Well, probably people that are in countries or in places that never were involved in this and other nations, and, but we rule all over the world and it'll, it'll be a ruler of the king with power and might. Almighty God is gonna rule and we're gonna rule with him and reign. And it's a thousand years. It's called... The millennial reign. The millennial reign, and it, the day of the Lord, sometimes it calls All, it that. It's also referred to sometimes as the day of the, of the Lord in Scripture. A thousand years. So right. we're on earth for right. a thousand years. Will people be saved? Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, I, I believe so. Will people be born? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Um, will people be judged like uh, immediately for uh, uh, Jesus Christ is the perfect judge, so I'll leave that to him, yes. but I think so. I think so, too. It's going to be a total different society. Uh, for a thousand years on the earth. Pretty crazy, huh? He's going to rule and reign. And then after the millennial reign, then there's going to be, Satan is going to be released for a time. There's going to be the final war. He's going to be cast uh, into the bottomless pit. Uh, and Lake of fire. The lake of fire. And there forever. And, and then after that, the, the great white throne judgment where people that are not going being a part of heaven will be judged into their eternal situation. So that's the end of it. And at that point, there's a new heaven and a new earth, Right. which just listen to me carefully. God made everything perfect to begin with. Man would never die. A perfect society, a perfect earth. And things have been messed up by sin, but sin will be no more. Satan will be no more. The demons, which were fallen angels with them, will be no more. There'll be no more evil persuasion anywhere. There won't be a Satan to go up and say to God, hey, God, uh, that Job, you think he's so hot, just turn me loose on him, see if he serves you. That kind of stuff will stop. None of that stuff is going on anymore. Right. There's no organized demons on the earth. And there's going to be a new earth and a new heaven, and it's going to be perfect and perfect bliss forever and ever. And we're talking about a hundred year life is like, I mean, not even a blink compared to a million years, much less a trillion years, much less... Uh, a zillion years or however many more years when it never ends eternity we can't even comprehend and therefore this temporary life is not worth living for yourself 
the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the world, the pride of, pride of life and the, the, the lust of, uh, uh, of, of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not worth living that. There's something better to live for. And that's why we look at this. Why do we look at this? Because there's some bad things going to happen. And you don't want to get left here. And you want to keep your eyes on Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth.